Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Lawrence Plays Factorio Angel Bobs. As you probably remember, in the last episode, I was talking about getting um, the hydrogen fluoride production down here up and running. And the big problem here was that we're not producing acid gas all that quickly for it, because um, it's just a byproduct of the plastic making. So it was it was producing it. In fact, it still it still is. Um, yeah, it still will be as acid gas comes through. But it's but it's just sort of ground to a halt. Um, so that's not running brilliantly. So my plan um, was to take was to build another facility up here that um, takes in acid gas, but also produces acid gas based on puffer processing. And that's a, another biological area that I've not really played with before. So what have we got here? We've got the two ores, the silver and aluminium ore, coming in here and being fed down this belt to be turned into into the catalyst. And then here we've got, well, this is supposed to be sulfur coming in, but apparently the trains are screwed up while I wasn't looking and we've filled up this base, this, this area with tungsten. So, <sighs> I'm, yeah, going to have to come up here and tidy this up, which is a bit of a pain, but, oh well, Celevi, I'll have to try and work out why the tungsten didn't work properly as well. So, that all comes down here. We've got the, the acid gas being brought in here from where, wherever it comes from. And then being turned into um, turned into the hydrogen fluoride and a couple of other things to burn off. That's fine. The um, catalyst production is is easy. That works. Not, that's that's just only requ ever requires one assembly machine really. You produce those so those get produced so quickly. It's, it's absolutely fine. That's um, so that's running along here. As you can see, only some of these machines are running, but that'll that'll grow over time. We've also got um, in order in order to get the puffers working properly, we also need the, the artificial puffer atmosphere, which is made from um, oxygen, hydrogen fluoride. So I did need to bring in a little bit of that. I'll talk about that in a sec. And sulfur dioxide. So what we originally had was I, I brought my first load. I brought a train up here and then unloaded into these tanks um, with the, the hydrogen fluoride to, to, to kickstart the process, so that I could have these machines start building the start producing the uh, puffer atmosphere. The um, sulfur dioxide is coming in from this supply of sulfur that's been polluted with tungsten, grumble grumble. So that will in theory be producing plenty of puffer atmosphere, except it's not. And we and the oxygen just comes out of these this system here. We're pulling in air and spitting out nitrogen, uh, which we're burning off, and oxygen. Simple. So there's three steps to puffer growing. Here we are over here. And yeah, I'm afraid the... Um, the puffer system makes this comedy farting noise all the time while it's processing, which is a bit annoying. So let's um, let's get rid of that. So there are three steps to this. The first one is the puffer breeding, which takes in two puffers, some beans for them to eat, and some puffer atmosphere for them to flit around in. Um, it has all now stopped, which is a bit of a shame because of the uh, the lack of puffer atmosphere. So that's um, something I'm going to have to go in and fix. In fact, if you'll just excuse me for a moment, I'll do that now, and then we'll uh, get back to it once it's actually running. Okay, where was I? Okay, right, so let's, let's see. Having fixed all of that, it should be a little bit more interesting to watch now because you'll be able to see the machines running. So as, as you can see, I've um, sorted out these... Uh, I've tidied up all of the tungsten here. Hopefully it won't happen again. I guess we'll see what happens if it does. So the, the um, sulfur is coming down here, being turned into sulfur dioxide, as I said. And that means I've got this puff, puffer atmosphere coming out now. I don't seem to be producing a great deal of it, but it also does seem to be enough to keep these machines running and farting. Let's kill that again. Right, so as you can see, on this side, we're taking in the puffers. So if you watch those two coming down there, they'll get grabbed. Probably both. Yep, there we go. So they're being taken in. And two puffers and a set of and a, and a pile of beans will allow this machine to output a pair of puffers. He's a, well, hopefully one of these will spit him out fairly soon. A pair of puffers and an egg. The egg then gets passed on to this hatching machine, which will produce something. Um, it'll hopefully produce a couple of the at least one gas one it'll probably hopefully produce one gaseous puffer, which is the ones that are actually being used for all of this. But there are various other types, sort of toxic and acid and potato and goodness knows what else. So there's various other things that are being produced as well. So as you can hear, we go, they're coming out in an egg and two buffers, as, as I said. The eggs are then passed down to this machine, which hatches them, which doesn't take very long. And yep, this has produced a gaseous puffer. That's handy. And again, but it's also producing these eggshells as well. Um, and occasionally it produces other things. So if we look at this warehouse, we've got 950 eggshells because we've hatched 950 eggs. And then we've got, like, what's that, about 300 weird types of colourful puffer that we're just not using at the moment. So they're going to just be kept in the warehouse. And a warehouse can hold 100,000 of stuff, I think, 163,000, something like that. So it's going to be a while till that's a problem. So these, these puffers then get passed down here. We make sure there's enough in these machines. 
any excess will then can then come up this belt round the top here and go into these ones over here now these are um if these are puffer breeders then these are puffer i don't know they're playing with puffers or something like that who knows so what we've got here is we've got um, air, compressed air going in along with nutrient pulp which i'll talk about in a second and the and, and again the artificial atmosphere and as you can see they're swimming around quite happily inside there and that produces loads of acid gas and we have four puffers four puffers go in and then it spits out i saw something spitting out then but i, I put in lots of extra arms for grabbing them in again quickly so what happened what the, the way this works is it takes four puffers in and it's guaranteed to spit out three puffers and there's a 95 percent chance of a fourth one coming out so that means one in every 20 times roughly um well it, it, exactly 20, one in 20 but not in order um the one of the puffers will get essentially eaten by the process and that's why i've got this puffer breeders here producing them in order to sort of top up any that go missing and it also means I'm, I'm now trying to fill up as many of these machines as possible and we've got down to about yeah we've got enough puffers to run down to about here so far so we're actually very nearly there i don't know why this isn't running perhaps it's run out of puffer atmosphere in fact we've got beyond that we've got loads of spare puffers so i could put in some more of these and extend this and get the um, acid gas out even faster so i'd say that that means this is all running really really well so that's good and if we look up here then we've got 120 we've got about 250,000 um hydrogen fluoride sat in these tanks waiting to go off to be turned used in the in the titanium processing so again that's working really well i think I'm, I'm, I'm generally very happy with that the only other thing i needed to add in for this was the um was this system down here that uses the zombie something or other plants I they've, they've got some sort of zombie based pun name uh and that, and that we they're slightly easier to deal with because they don't spit out seeds separately they just spit out the um the leaves or the plant that can be turned into seeds or into bio stuff we then turn that into beans which get passed over here and we can also pass those beans up here to be made into more nutrient pulp as well should we should we need to but at the moment the nutrient pulp market seems to be being filled quite nicely by the um uh, this this one the other the other plants i'm growing so so we've got plenty go plenty of uh, room to expand here this which is quite nice okay so that's that's that and this is all working working well as you, as you saw by the amount of um, hydrogen fluoride that's coming out that there's no problems up here uh, now that i've fixed the sulfur input so that means i've got i've got tungsten the next thing i did was down here i'm starting to produce rocket parts now we've got um it's relatively straightforward as far as the inputs go here so we've got uh two ores we've got the silver ore and the aluminium ore coming in because i'm going to need again this is another thing that needs the green catalysts uh, for several different things in fact we've got ammonia coming in we've got uh, nitric acid coming in and that's being made uh from the that's coming from the um uh, what do we call it rubite um overflow so we're producing we're producing the um, nitric wastewater here and that's getting turned into nitric acid there's also this machine here that can produce extra nitric acid if required and then we're feeding the excess of this somehow i don't know which pipe it is this nitric acid yeah somehow I, i'm sure i plumbed it in very sensibly uh with an overflow valve somewhere yeah oh here oh i don't know there's a there's a there's a series of pumps and things over here and there's loads of nitric acid here waiting to be picked up it as far as i'm concerned that's all that's all working fine <laughs> uh yeah there's a reasonable amount of the um thing there okay uh i've confused myself yeah here we go nitric acid and i've also got some sodium hydroxide coming in that was more of a sort of a, a bootstrapping thing just to get to get it started because when we come up here you'll see that um over here we're also producing the um the sodium hydroxide from these from this washing plants what we've we got here we've got a system we've got to so we're producing salt water that's being turned into um hydrogen and chlorine and uh, the sodium hydroxide sodium hydroxide is then getting turned into liquefied sodium hydroxide sodium hydroxide solution which is combined with the chlorine that it just came off of so why this is multiple steps i'm not quite sure and producing this green stuff in a box which is chloramine i think i forget exactly what it is uh, that's getting passed down into here and mixed with ammonia to make monochloramine gas which is great um then we're mixing that with more ammonia where are we yes we're mixing it with more ammonia in order to get the hydrazine and the and hydrogen chloride as a as a byproduct which we're turning back into um, hydrogen and chlorine which then gets passed back up to here and into these tanks now there appears to be a problem here with there being too much hydrogen so i'm going to need to whack a um a burn off valve on here which is interesting because i do use that down i do use the hydrogen down here to make the um methanol which 
ch uh, out of that and carbon dioxide, which we are then turning into, into um, oh goodness knows, methylamine gas here, uh, dimethylamine, dimeth dimethylhydrazine. So there's there's lots of stuff going on here, and they're all spitting out purified water as well. So that's why I've got too much of that. And eventually, out of all of this, we get the um, we get the fuel capsules for the for the rocket fuel. Then below here, we've got the oxidizer capsules that are made from dinitrogen tetroxide, which is made from nitrogen monoxide, which is which is made from ammonia and um, oxygen, along with the green catalyst. So that's all reasonably reasonably straightforward. It's just a sort of a load of mixing things. Um, and that makes these oxidizers. We combine the two in these assembly machine, uh, these chemical plants, sorry. And then we get rocket fuel pods. And these can actually be used to power trains as well as rockets. So now that I've got quite a lot of these, I might start using them in the train to make the train just go even faster and accelerate even harder. That could be fun. At the moment, I've only put them in my personal train, the one I use to get around the map. So that's now really nippy. Uh, it also seems we're running short of something. Yeah, there's no fuel pods coming out of here. I think that's because I've got too much hydrogen, and so everything's stopped and backed up. Um, I'm going to need to fix that. As I said, with a blow-off valve, or more like more action, more more sensibly. So the other thing is, um, remember earlier I was talking about um, plastic production, and that's where is it? It's up here. It's this bit, this big thing here. And so we don't have. I was going to say we don't have that much plastic being produced. We actually have loads of it now. Um, this is is now full, so um, maybe what I'm about, I was about to say is um, is nonsense. But I was going to say that uh, one of the things we need in here is methanol, methanol and meth the other meth. Uh, whatever it was, propane. I'm confused. I've confused myself. Meth. Maybe Oh, maybe it was methanol, and I've been making... Am I making methane turning into methanol, or am I just making straight up methanol over here? I can't remember. Methanol. Straight up methanol. Okay. So that could, in theory, um, be piped over here, the excess of it at least, and added to these methanol tanks here in order to make more plastic. Um, I apparently don't really need that right now because I've got more plastic than I know what to do with but it's something that's probably worth thinking about if I could find a way of getting it in there because historically plastic has been a bit of a problem um, for now I might just go in and burn the hydrogen off <laughs> that's gonna be easier <laughs> uh, yeah so that's me that's making these um, rocket fuel pods which is great we're also feeding in the tungsten from this block of stations coming down here going in here and this is seriously seriously overkill I've not I didn't look into the speed of how long how long these things take to make at all but these are rocket engines are being produced and I probably only need one maybe two of these um, machines to, in order to make it but we've, we've got five they're, they're cheap who cares and so these are producing the rocket engines I've got them going onto the same belt down here and that means I've got the first two steps of, um, of building rocket components done and that's well it was it was a, it was a big job my brain melted a little bit trying to get that trying to get that working but that means I'm nearly there the um, the low density structures there that's a solved problem um, <clears throat> as long as I've got enough aluminium which I should have now because of the massive um, metal ma massive metal facility over uh, here this is making massive quantities of aluminium and in fact look this is absolutely full so yeah we've got we've got loads of that that's not a problem um, presumably that also means the low density structures are full yeah so I can start pulling them out and getting them them over here as well I also will will also need to do the um, the rocket control units. I don't know how difficult those are. Okay, so we've got we've got basic electronic components, we've got transistors, we've got integrated circuits. We have not got CPUs. We've not got multi-layer circuit boards. However, we do have copper plate, gold plate, fiberglass, and um, ferric chloride. So that's easy. That's just going to be some more assembly on the top of the um, the main bus. CPUs, gilded copper wire is presumably gold and copper cable. Okay, that's doable. Silicon wafers are, are, are done, are solved problem. Sulfuric acid's probably on there already. Silicon nitride. I don't know. I've, I've made this in various other places. I don't know if it's on the on the bus yet, but that's that's absolutely fine. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to make these rocket control units on the top at the top of this bus somewhere. I might try and squeeze them in here. The multi -layer, along with the multi so multi layer circuit boards and yeah I could probably might be able to fit this in here if it starts to get a bit big then that's absolutely fine I can just 
pull it up here and start doing it up here. Um, it's a bit of a shame that I've been short-sighted as usual and put the um, and squeezed this in here quite so close to the bus. So getting the um, extra products, which is going to be basically this purple circuit board up here, is going to be slightly awkward. But there's a gap here; it'll it'll fit. That's not. No, no, I'm not too worried about that. So yeah, we can get the rocket control units being built up here, and then whack them in a train, bring them down there, um, and the heat shield tiles. That's the other thing. Silicon nitride again, and tungsten carbides. That's going to be Oh, tungsten oxide. So I'm going to need to pull tungsten oxide out of the middle of my, <laughs> out of the middle of the tungsten processing facility. That's mildly annoying, but not too difficult. Um, that's going to be this. Oh, that's frustrating because I've done direct insertion here. So there isn't a belt I can just pull off. So what I'm probably going to do here is extend this upwards a bit into. The, yeah, it's going to go into the silicon um, area, but never mind. I can. I don't care. Or I could actually I could go down. That's probably going to be neater. So we'll make this go down, and then we'll have another some more of these uh, chemical furnaces down here, making the uh, tungsten oxide, and then mixing it with carbon. And there might even be carbon already made around here. But if not, I've got coal. There, there we go. There's some carbon. I can bring that down down here as well. Mix it in, give it a good stir, and then we can start making those uh, tiles out of it. So that looks like the rest of the components for the rocket are just going to come in by train. So what I can do then is I can put in another one of these little station cluster things about here and have that unload the low density structures, the rocket control units and the um, heat shield tiles. And then we can start making a rocket. Um, and that's that's great, obviously. <laughs> uh, that's the, obviously the, 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 uh, the next big thing we need to do. Then I can start worrying about the uh, satellite. Now, as we discussed in the last episode, that's going to be a lot more difficult because there's a lot of weird things that go into the satellite. Um, yeah. <laughs> a lot of them are already going to be down here. So I'm going to have the low density structures, the rocket control units, the rocket fuel. I just need to... And the radars are going to be straightforward, but the radiothermic generate, radiothermoelectric generators and the silver zinc batteries are going to be interesting and difficult. So that's going to be the next challenge. Okay, so I've spent half this episode planning, but that um, I think is probably a good thing. It's nice, nice to give. I think it's nice to give you an idea of what's what I'm uh, thinking about and, and my thought process and what's going to go on in, in between between now and the next episode. I hope you'll come along and join me in the next episode, where I'll uh, hopefully have got the um, rocket control units and the heat shield tiles um, up and running and be bring them in here. And I'll probably at that point, I think I'll, I'll get the um, I'll get the system starting building um, building the the, um, the rocket components because those take those at least in vanilla take quite a long time to do. So if I can get that up and running, sort of sooner rather than later, then maybe by the time I've solved all of the uh, satellite problems and got those running and built one of them, everything will be everything the rocket will be ready and I can just shove the satellite straight in it. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. I hope you'll come along and join me for that, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.